Of course, I'm here in Vrindavan, and I'm staying at MVT. Those of you who know, I'm hearing the same echo. Yes? If you say can you try to mute your mic and then see if only one mic is unmuted? To mute which mic? You want me to mute a mic? No, I'm Navi Nandan Prabhu. So just Prabhu's mic should be unmuted. Just shoot the Kirti Prabhu's mic should be unmuted and then everybody yeah. else mute. Yes, I believe so. Okay, so again, um, we're here in Vrindavan. I'm staying at MVT. I'm, I'm on a Wi Fi internet, so things do happen. Um, sometimes we lose our signal. Sometimes a storm comes, and it, it seems it usually happens when I'm giving a class. So hopefully everything will work out today. Um, I did want to, I wanted to start out. I wanted to read one thing by Srila Prabhupada. And let me see if I can get that up here. Since tomorrow here in Vrindavan, and, and probably where you are as well, tomorrow is the appearance day of uh, Lord Balaram. I believe it is here. We've been having Julan Yatra for the last few days. And uh, I took, I just put a little quote on. Of course, here's, there's our, our Lord Balaram here in Vrindavan and Krishna Balaram Mandir. So in 1970, Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to one of his female disciples. And this is a quote from the letter. Now, this was just a letter to his disciple. Actually, it's Akayani, who is uh, Gopal Krishna Maharaj's ex. Prabhupada says, regarding the color of Balaramaji, he is colored like milk white with little bluish tint and rosy luster. Our idea of whiteness is of the milk foam. <laughs> so um, I just I find that it's of course tomorrow being Balaram's um, appearance day is very wonderful but just a description that Srila Prabhupada gives of the complexion of Lord Balaram is just um, so sweet and so amazing talks rosy pink uh, bluish tint milk white foam uh, and when I read it, I, I remember very much Srila Prabhupada saying how, how surprised he would become reading his books. So this is um, something I wanted to speak about today. In traveling with Srila Prabhupada, I started traveling with him September 1972. And then it was about a year later Actually, it was just a year later. It was September 1973. So now I've been traveling with Srila Prabhupada for one full year. I've been around the world already two times. Been to many, many countries. And is what I see is how much Srila Prabhupada appreciates his books. How much himself he appreciates reading his books. This is what I would get to see um, over and over again. Srila Prabhupada reading and relishing his books. Like he said when he was reading once, how surprised he becomes. He said, everything is just perfect. Every word is perfect. And he says, it's Krishna. He says he's surprised that even he is writing these words. He says, because everything is coming from Krishna. So with the manner, now this was after I'm with the year with Prabhupada, and now the Bhagavad Gita as it is, Macmillan, famous Macmillan edition, Krishna Arjuna in the chariot, reddish blues, everything in, in the uh, photograph on the cover. So this had been out now just for some months. When I first came in 1971, we had, we used to call it the Blue Gita. The Blue Bhagavad Gita it was small, almost like paperback and about yay thick. Um, 
it was abridged. Many purports weren't there, different things weren't there. So when this Bhagavad Gita, Macmillan edition came out that was printed in Japan, Prabhupada was very happy for many, many reasons. And I began to see myself just how much this Gita meant to Srila Prabhupada and how he wanted us to, to know it, to study it, to memorize verses, and to utilize these verses. And this became very, very apparent when we stayed at Bhaktivedanta Manor. I think all of you there, you're familiar with Bhaktivedanta Manor. So I first went there, well, went there for a few days right after the manor was purchased. Maybe it was in April, Prabhupada stopped there just for a short time. And then, of course, he went there and stayed August, September for several weeks. So that was during this time. And of course, every evening, as we know, Shaima Sundar, his secretary at the time, he would arrange different people coming to see Srila Prabhupada in his sitting room. And there were all kinds of artists. Donovan came, of course, George, George Harrison came once or twice, and the uh, race car driver came, and, and different politicians were coming, teachers. So every evening this darshan was going on. Now I'm, I'm Prabhupada's servant. I've been with him one year. And um, we'd be sitting. And Prabhupada so much, he would speak and he would quote from Bhagavad Gita. In Sanskrit, he would quote the different verses from Bhagavad Gita. And then he would just look towards me and this became a, almost every night, this was a mantra. He would look at me and say, find that verse. The reason he said find that verse was because of how happy he was, because in the back of the Bhagavad Gita, and of course in all of Srimad Bhagavatam, there was the Sanskrit index. And in this index in the Bhagavad Gita, you could find the first line and the third line of every verse of Bhagavad Gita in the transliteration, right, in the English, in the English uh, vocabulary. So even though I was, I was literally, I was new, pretty new in the temple, just for a year staying in the temple, and he would just say the first line or the third line of the verse, and then he would look at me and say, find that verse. So however long it took, seconds, minute, I would have to understand what he said, which I did. I have been with Prabhupada for a year. And he quoted so many verses daily from Bhagavad Gita, from Srimad Bhagavatam. If he looked at me, he said, Aho, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, um, whatever he would say. And then I would just try to understand the first letter, the first word, because then you would just go in al alphabetically. And then he would have me read would have me read the verse and then read the purport. And this was one of two different times that Prabhupada made a statement about his books because he would keep quoting these verses from Bhagavad Gita. And he would say, just like the lawyer, he said in the legal battles, the lawyer, he, he quotes, he quotes from the law books, not that he just, whimsically does something, he's quoting the law books. And he said, these are our law books. He said, these books, these books that Prabhupada spent over 10 years, they were for us to read. We're, we're always having our marathons distributing books. But Prabhupada emphasized not just distributing them, which of course he did that himself, but how important it was to read them. Um, I we have a short class this evening. It's just one little class about Prabhupada. I many times I, I've traveled all around doing seminars, sometimes three days, four days a week, like that, just speaking about Srila Prabhupada, how Srila Prabhupada lived, things that he did. And um, as I said, this was something he was doing all the time. He wanted us to read these books, he wanted us to understand. He wanted us to be able to quote from Shastra like he was doing. Because this Shastra, these Vedic Shastra, 
For Prabhupada, it was everything. This is real knowledge. So one of the many, many things I got to see with Prabhupada is how much he liked reading his books. So it happened from the very beginning. Um, again, I joined him right at John Mastami time. So gradually I got to see Prabhupada's daily schedule, which it was, um, we know of course, if we start in the morning, Prabhupada got up shortly after midnight, sometimes midnight, one o'clock by two o'clock at the latest, and he would be translating. And then that would go on, of course, and his morning walk would happen six to seven in that area. Then, of course, he would go in the temple, greet the deities, have class, have breakfast around nine o'clock or so. And then in the morning, he would meet with devotees in the temple area where he was, management things. The mail would come in. By noontime, I'm giving him massage. During massage, he's going over the mail. And then, of course, after massage, he would have his, he would bathe, put on fresh clothes, say his noon Gayatri and have prashadam. So after lunch prashadam, Prabhupada took little rest. And the afternoon was very much personal time. Is, is from what I saw with Prabhupada, it was a nice time, two, three, four in the afternoon. Prabhupada would be, he would play his harmonium right there at Bhaktivedanta Manor. If you know where Prabhupada's room is, directly across from his door, well, I guess directly across from his front door was a stairway, but a little over to the left, there was a door to, the, to another room. So that was the servant's quarters, meaning secretary, servant, Sanskrit editor. We would share that room. So sometimes in the afternoon, I could hear the harmonium, Prabhupada playing harmonium. And he'd be chanting, Bhajan. So whenever I heard that, I would just go in the Prabhupada sitting room, would offer obeisances and sit down. Then within very shortly, Prabhupada, he would just look and he would, Prabhupada had a way, he could do so many things without talking, Shiva Prabhupada. So he would just look and he would look at his cartels, which meant it's okay, you play the cartels along with him. So I would do that. After one bhajan there at the manor was one afternoon, I was so overwhelmed. I said, Prabhupada, I said, you're chanting. I says, no one else, I said, chants like you. And Prabhupada looked at me and smiled. He said, I have my own, um, my own style. He said, I have my own style. So in the afternoon, Prabhupada would do bhajans. He would walk around, chant japa, hand in his bead bag. He would walk around through his rooms, chanting japa. And sometimes he would read. Now again, when, when I first became his servant, I found it, um, I, I found it kind of amazing because I saw him reading his book so much. There were no other books in his room. If you looked anywhere as we, and as we traveled, I was with him 1972 through 1975. So in those, in that three years span, the books increased by 30 at least. So when I first joined him, his bookshelf would just have first canto, a little bit of second canto, nectar of devotion, Krishna book. But it was always increasing. But they were the only books on Srila Prabhupada's shelf. And he would be reading them. One time on the airplane, I was sitting next to him and Prajumna, his Sanskrit editor, was sitting next to him. And we're just sitting there. Prabhupada's reading his Bhagavad Gita. And then he looked at us. He said, who do you know? He said, reads his own books after he's finished. He said, what author do you know? Once he's finished the book, he reads the book. So of course, without us, we just say nothing. We're just looking and Prabhupada said, no one. 
He said, no author reads his books once they're printed. He said, he goes on to another one. He writes another book. He said, but here I am reading this book, this Bhagavad Gita as it is. And again, he looked, he said, why? So looking at, he said, because they're not my words. He said, they're Krishna's words. I never saw anyone that was more enthusiastic reading his books other than Srila Prabhupada. And they were his books. It was everything he worked so hard, so diligently to give us. So one afternoon, of course, when I was with Prabhupada, as his personal servant, I say this now also, we're, we've all been quarantined now for many months. But when I was with Prabhupada, that was the first time I was actually experienced quarantine. Wherever Prabhupada was, it could be anywhere in the world, I was always within earshot of a bell, Prabhupada ringing his bell. So imagine, a bell is just a little hand bell, brass bell, so Prabhupada would ring it. So I had to be able to hear that bell. So wherever Prabhupada went, I was right next door, 24-7, waiting for the bell to ring. So this one afternoon, I had just been with Prabhupada a short time, a few months, he rings the bell. So I went into the room and I offer obeisances. And I sit up, and Prabhupada's sitting on his asana behind his desk on the floor, a cushion on the floor. And he's reading. He's reading Nectar of Devotion, his Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. I offer obeisances and I'm sitting right in front of him. And Prabhupada has his glasses, reading glasses, because he's reading. And he rang the bell. I go in and I'm sitting and I look and he just looks at me. Got the nectar of devotion. He says, this book is so nice. He said, everything. Everything needed to become Krishna conscious is in this book. He said, you don't have to read hundreds of books. He said, if you just read this book and understand, he said, you can become Krishna conscious. He's just looking at just me in the sitting room with him. He says, not that you have to read so many books. He says, it's so nice. He said, everything is in this book. And then he put his head back down and started reading again, which for me meant offer obeisances and I left the room. So many, many months go by, serving every day. I cook for him, doing massage, morning walk, all these things. One afternoon, again, it's always in the afternoon. Afternoon, he rings the bell and I go in, offer obeisances and I'm looking at Srila Prabhupada, and again, he's sitting behind, sitting on his asana, and he's reading, reading Bhagavad Gita, his Bhagavad Gita. He's reading it. He doesn't have legal pad next to him, pen. He's not, not writing it. He's just reading and relishing. I offer obeisances, and I sit up, and I'm looking at Prabhupada, and he has his glasses on, and he looks at me. And he says the same thing. This is a year later. This book is so nice, he said. He said, you don't have to read hundreds of books. He said, if you just read this one book, he said, you can be Krishna conscious. He said, it's so nice, this book. He said, everything is here. Then he put his head back down and started reading. As being with him day after day, you knew this is how Prabhupada did things. Just by watching his movements, you knew what your next move was. He told me that in Vrindavan. First class servant knows what to do without being asked. So even in these little ways, that's what it was. You would see Prabhupada and put his head down. I offered obeisances and I left. 
So now we're back, Prabhupada's back in New Dwarka, Los Angeles. Afternoon. My room, servant's room, is right down the hall from his sitting room. And I hear the bell ring. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So, of course, you run, go into Prabhupada's room, offer obeisances. Every time I went into Srila Prabhupada's room, you offer obeisances. Every time you left, you offer obeisances. When I would bring him his lunch, sometimes I would be in and out of his room six, seven, ten times because I would bring a japati, fresh japati, hot japati, little more sabji, little more dal. Each time I would come in, I would come in, give him what he wanted, offer obeisances, and then leave. Some days I probably offered obeisance to him 30 times, 40 times. He never said, you've done it enough today. Prabhupada was very kind. He gave us the opportunity to do service in so many ways. Every time I went in, I would offer obeisances. I would leave, I would offer obeisances. So now he rang the bell. This is the third time he's reading over two years. Not the third time he's reading, the third time he rang the bell. He, is, he was so absorbed. He was relishing what he was reading so much. Even I'm the only person <laughs> close by, he wanted to tell me. So I offer obeisances and sit up. Prabhupada's reading Krishna book, volume one. This was the book when I joined, it had just come out, 1971, April, right around then, a few months before it had just come out. And I would read that book. And I read that book to Prabhupada before becoming his servant in Los Angeles. This was two years before, May of 1972, four months before I became his servant, I was reading Krishna book to him in the garden. One day we were sitting in the room, just five or six of us in the garden in New York, Los Angeles. And because I was reading Krishna book each day, we would go in, offer obeisance, sit down. You didn't do anything until Prabhupada nodded, or told you. Huh? We all come in and sit down. If he's chanting, we're all chanting. When he talked, we listened. And then he would look at me and nod. That meant you can begin reading. So I learned all these signals. <laughs> Prabhupada had signals he would use, very simple, didn't waste energy. So even before becoming his servant, I started to learn these signals. He would just look at you, give a simple nod. That meant go on. So it was probably the third morning and he looked at third afternoon, it would happen in the afternoon. And he looked at me and he nodded. I opening the Krishna book. And he, he looked and he said, I like the Cower Boys very much. And then I started reading a story. So now this day, sorry, I got off track. We're back in Prabhupada's room. I offered obeisances, I sit up and he's reading Krishna book. And Prabhupada's in ecstasy. It's Krishna, he's reading all about Krishna's pastimes. He's right there. So I sit up, Prabhupada's got his glasses on. And he looks at me. He says the same thing. This book is so nice. If you just read this one book, he said, you can become Krishna conscious. He said, it's so wonderful, this book. Everything is there. He said, he said, you read it, you can be Krishna conscious. But he didn't put his head down. He's got his glasses on and he just keeps looking at me. And I'm sitting and of course I don't say anything. And he's looking. He said, you don't even have to read the whole book. Now I'm just sitting on the floor, three feet in front of him. 
He said, just one chapter from this book. He said, this Krishna book is so nice. He said, if you just read one chapter from this book, you can be Krishna conscious. But he keeps looking at me. And I'm sitting there, so I don't dare move because he didn't put his head down. That's a signal. So he hasn't given me any signals. But I'm sitting and he looks. And he's still looking. He said, you don't even have to read the whole chapter. Just one page. He ran his finger up and down the page of the Krishna book he was reading. He said, just one page of this book. If you read, he said, you can become Krishna conscious. Still looking at me. He said, you don't even have to read the whole page. He said, just one line. Runs his finger up and down the line. Just one line. He said, if you read one line from this book, you can become Krishna conscious. And he's still looking at me. So I'm just sitting. And he looks. He said, you don't even have to read the whole line. He said, just one word. And he just pointed at one word on the page he was reading on the Krishna book. He said, just one word from this book. He said, if you open and read one word from this book, you can become Krishna conscious. Because Krishna is in every word. So that's what I was thinking. And it's why I read you that little sentence, huh? one sentence, two sentences about Lord Balaram. This is what Srila Prabhupada gave us. He didn't just tell us Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We're his servants. In every possible way, he shows us how lovable this person is. And he's demanding. Prabhupada never demanded. <laughs> Only we follow the rules and regulations. That vow was there. But he always said, you have to read these books. Prabhupada spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, uh, years and years, putting all these books together so we can know Krishna. And we can, by knowing Krishna, then you can love Krishna. This is what Prabhupada showed us. So he said that, just one word. So this is how important yeah, we say yeah, the books are the basis. It's the basis for everything we do in Krishna consciousness are the books. So Prabhupada gave us these. He told us to distribute them so everyone, everyone can become Krishna conscious. I always saw when I was with Prabhupada that the temples basically were all warehouses for books. And from these warehouses, his books were distributed. A very important part of what Prabhupada did. So I see already is getting, um, it's almost 6.30. I know we started a, a little bit late. Like we, you know, I'm okay going a little long. But um, like I say, I could, we can do this again sometime, perhaps. I think Trikala Gyai was talking about next Sunday. We can see. But as I said, there's so much to talk about Srila Prabhupada. But um, right now, we can open it up for some questions. If anyone has any questions today. Thank you very much for sharing uh, this. Hi, um, Bol. Hare Krishna. Uh, just a comment, uh, Prabhu. It's really nice to listen to you. Know, my name is Madhusudan. I'm from Coventry, not far away from uh, London. Ah. And uh, Tri Kalagya is uh, very close to me. So I see him he's sitting there and listening as well. It's really nice. Uh, and uh, I do remember that Macmillan's version of Bhagavad Gita. Because yeah. when it came out, it was on a bookshelf. And I, I was 
searching for an answer to something. And I have came across that Macmillan version of Bhagavad Gita on the bookshelf. And mm -hmm. I was totally blown away. <laughs> I bought yeah. it uh, and, and I opened the page and there was the answer on that page to the question that was lingering in my head. Yes, and yes. Uh, I read that book, you know, and I kept that Macmillan version. It's a large printed version. So, and, and what impressed me the most was the picture of Prabhupada at the back. And I said, oh, this looks like some elderly gentleman. He looked a little bit my, my, my own father, actually, <laughs> being, a, being <laughs> an Indian as well. And I thought, oh, this is nice. And what impressed me the most as well was the signature of Prabhupada at the bottom yes, yes. on the page. Hey, see, but I said, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this. This is obviously yes. a book that is transcendent to any other books that's around here in this. I had read Bhagavad Gita before by Dan Mascaro and other and Gandhi and all that. So I was into, but this, this totally blew me away. And a few months later, I walked into the same bookshop and there was a Krishna trilogy <laughs> that had come out. And that yeah. I purchased as well and I started reading it. But obviously, like you say, when you read Prabhupada's books first, he's all the time emphasizing Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. And I kept saying, why is Prabhupada repeating, repeating so much, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was years later that I realized why he's writing Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it's saying, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. And I, in, in the Krishna book, that is how, you know, you, you sometimes question, but each word that Prabhupada wrote yeah. was amazing, actually. And I really appreciate you sharing those moments. And I came to Bhagavad, uh, Bhaktivedanta Manor and I missed yeah. Prabhupada by a weekend or so. The next mm. time I came to Bhaktivedanta Manor and they were doing Shradanjali. And I said, what's going on here? And I never met Prabhupada. I never knew anything about him. I just uh, knew that this is some person. But when I went to the manor and I saw the big picture of Prabhupada, I said, that's the same person in that Bhagavad Gita, and he's the same person. Now, that's when I made the connection. And then I learned a little bit more about Prabhupada, but I never realized Prabhupada till I read his biography, obviously. Mm. But when I came to the manor, it was the early days, and you just had, uh, you know, I, I spent a few weekends there, and I slept uh, with the devotees in a sleeping bag upstairs and had cold showers there. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, and, and obviously uh -oh. they were doing, that, that particular weekend, they were doing Shradanjali. And mm -hmm. that's when I realized that whoever this person is, I don't know much about him, but they always say that he, he, he passed away in Vrindavan then. And that was a, a big sort of, you know, offering of Shradanjali to him. Mm. But it's years later on that I really learned more about Prabhupada than his his pastimes are unfolding as someone like you spend a lot of time with him, um, are, are unfolding this, you know, even on a platform like this. So I really want to thank Nabi for organizing this session and for you to come on. And uh, my Dharampatni has spent years. We, uh, you know, we've, uh, my daughter is there in, uh, MVT, so you might bump into her, hopefully. Ah. Or Trikalagya might introduce to her. <laughs> anyway, thank you What's very much. Name? Chaitanya Leela. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She, her, her and my wife are friends. They're good friends, yeah. I did see her. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Oh, this is a small world. <laughs> oh, well, it is small here in MVT. It's very small. There's only about, you know, I don't know, two dozen of us living here. So many empty flats. We've been very, very, you know, we're very grateful to be able to be here at this time. You know, of course, I live um, in Bushy, just by Bhaktivedanta Manor from 2003 to 2010. Okay. 
So I, I was based there, and that's actually where I finished writing my book, was um, there in Bushy with my wife, Amekla, who, who she died 10 years ago. But um, she helped me get the book finished, and it was produced there by Sita Ram Prabhu. And uh, yeah, so everything got done there. So that was actually a very important time for me when I was there. I haven't been back there since I left 10 years ago. I, I have very much a long to visit many of the centers in the UK, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what Krishna arranges for the future. I have no idea anymore what will happen. But I've always yeah. wanted to go back and um, spend some time there, do a little traveling. Oh, really, really nice to see you. The one question I want to ask is, when Prabhupada was saying to you that if you read one chapter out of this Krishna book, uh -huh. then he kept looking at you. Then he said, even if you don't read a chapter, yes, read a page. Yes, he was encouraging. And then he kept looking at you. <laughs> Didn't you pick a book and say, let me read a word? <laughs> no. Was it, was That's it, was why. That hey. Prabhupada, knew, Prabhupada knew me very well. <laughs> it's, it's one thing, like I say, I can go on speaking. Um, over the years, over the decades since being with him, more and more I see how much he was always trying to direct me in my life without ordering me to do things. He would, he would speak to me in such a, we say nonchalant way. I always thought he was just speaking to me like a passerby practically. He just talked in such, such a way that I never realized he was telling me what to do all the time. And unfortunately, I was you know, not able to listen a whole lot. And as I a result, as a result, I had to go through many different things over, over my lifetime. I see now, I think, you know, I just turned 69 years old, and I think how much easier it would be for me to, to be with him now than it was when I was 22 years old. <laughs> you know, in one sense, I had a lot of energy then, but now I'm certainly a lot more peaceful than I used to be in those years. So, you know, we all have our things we look back on and I, I just hope for the opportunity to to serve him more faithfully and more attentively uh, now and in the future yes I want yeah. so much to try to to try to um, Prabhupada is everything we all know this we say it but the fact is for us for his followers his people in his ISKCON society Everything we know is coming from Srila Prabhupada. And if we just remain, I've also been asked Prabhupada's qualities. I, there's so many of his qualities to me are, are most wonderful, particularly his sense of humor. I always love to see Prabhupada laughing. But the quality that's most important, I think, for, that we all need to understand is Prabhupada's loyalty to his followers. And if we just take shelter within his society, is this kind, which Prabhupada said, I am this kind. He said, this kind and I, he said, I, this kind has come from me, just like son comes from the father. He said, son is nothing but the father. He said, so I am this kind. And of course we know he said, this kind was his body, BBT is his heart. So he's given us so many ways to completely stay connected with him. And if we do that, Prabhupada will never, we say, forsake us. He's always there for us. As, as long as we're doing our best, try to serve him faithfully and sincerely. He said he'll take us all back home, back to Godhead. Iskan will be there, he said, in the spiritual world. We'll have another Iskan. So Iskan is an eternal, not just a bunch of buildings here. It's Prabhupada. It's Prabhupada's very body. So if, if personal experience, I'm not, I'm not anything, but just by, just by trying to be Prabhupada's dog, just by trying to do a little service for Prabhupada, he gives us all protection in this life 
and in the future. So if you take away anything from this, you just stay close to Prabhupada, follow his instructions, read his books, try to help his mission, and Prabhupada will do everything else. That's his guarantee. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. I've always I've, I've always felt Prabhupada in his French, you know, his words are always been the guiding life, force in my life. So our life and soul. That's what yeah. we say, life and soul, birth after birth. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um yes, only to say a few words. Uh like uh, you mentioned um, how uh, when you were 22 you, you gave uh, basically your life to Prabhupada and so on. And mm. we wanted to express our gratitude to yourself, <laughs> to all the other uh, wonderful American hippies, if you like. Uh, I don't know if that, you are not in that category, but Prabhupada <laughs> these hippies became happies. And yeah. uh, really, if it wasn't for them, he would, he would be so thankful to them. And I remember one lecture, I listen to this often, it's only about a minute clip, but he would be saying, my spiritual master brought you and I'm so grateful to you. He would just choke up. So yeah. we, we also should be very thankful to devotees like yourselves who gave your youth. And if you hadn't, you know, mm. you know, we don't know what would happen, but it certainly wouldn't have blossomed as it has. Yeah. So, amazing. I say I, I say I, I gave my knees to Prabhupada. <laughs> I offered a basinsa many, many times, and I feel my knees don't work very good. So I'm very happy that I got to do that, though. It was most fortunate. Now, thank you very, very much. I um, wanted to um, ask you, in terms of um, books. The audience generally, people generally tend not to read philosophical books because, um, you know, there's so many distractions. Yes. Uh, the devotees <laughs> fall in that same trap. <laughs> and um, there's, there's always some sort of reluctance to, to, to read Shila Prabhupada's books. However, we, what I wanted to ask you was, um, at the moment, we're going through the Bhagavad Gita in some detail. And um, after the Bhagavad Gita, I, I, will, I wanted to ask you yourself, what should we uh, go to? Which, which, which scripture should we study? What would Prabhupada say? <laughs> <laughs> what I heard Prabhupada say so many times when he would be in his room, I said, his room there were always bookshelves, huh? And on the bookshelves were Prabhupada's, just Prabhupada's books. So sometimes in traveling, we would be in places where there weren't temples. Prabhupada would be staying in a guest cottage. This happened in Australia a few times. And there would just be a half a dozen devotees who were helping do the service there. So if you're not at a temple, sometimes then there's not a temple program. And Prabhupada didn't like that because he would always say, what is the program? <laughs> and the, the, the devotees where we were staying, they would think, you know, that they were supposed to organize the guests to come do this, do that. And Prabhupada would say, no, what is the program? And he was talking about the morning program, Mangal Arti, Guru Puja, classes. See, Anyway, without the class, sometimes then he would ring his bell and say, call everyone. Mm -hmm. So then everyone was just three, four, or five devotees. We'd go and sit in Prabhupada's room, and then he'd, he'd look at one of us, and he'd look at who was ever closest to the bookshelf, and he'd say, get a book. <laughs> and of course, immediately the first question, the devotee would say, which book? Yeah. Prabhupada, his answer was always the same, any book. So then the devotee would get the book and he'd open up the book and he'd say, where, Prabhupada? And his next response was, anywhere. 
when I when I first was introduced, I told you I was reading Krishna book. Anyway, it's a long story we can't go over today, but I saw Prabhupada really relish stories about demons, and he would laugh and laugh and laugh when Krishna killed the demons. So that was my first experiencing a devotee laughing and laughing and crying. He was laughing so much, and it was Prabhupada. So by the third day, we're sitting, and before I had picked a story from Krishna book to read to Prabhupada, which I'm thinking I have to pick a story about a demon because Prabhupada's going to laugh. Anyway, the third day, we come in and sit down, offer obeisances, Prabhupada's sitting in his asana. And before I could even find a story, because he knew what I'm thinking, I want to find a story about a demon. Oh, before I could do it, he looked right at me. And he never, the other days he would just wait, he would nod. And he looked right at me and he said, read. <laughs> so as soon as he said that, I realized I didn't have my story. So I start going through the pages. And then he says, anywhere. <laughs> so then I went to the next story and he looked at me, he said, Krishna is like a sweet ball. Wherever you bite, it's sweet. Nice. So we, you know, we all have different, um, we all have different likes, things that we favor. Some Krishna book, we all have favorite books of Prabhupada. The thing to do is read something from somewhere in Prabhupada's books. He said at least two hours a day, he was talking about classes, attending classes. He said, if you do one verse a day from Shema Bhagavatam, it will take you 50 years to complete <laughs> And then he said, and then you can begin all over again. He was talking about the temple. Prabhupada saw generations of his followers reading his books. He said for 10,000 years. There's one question on there. He said, as a new, as a new devotee, what yes. important thing to do? So that's what's important. First, the important thing to do is become very strong strong in your Krishna consciousness, your faith becomes strong, and we say unflinching. That means nothing can shake it. And to do that, we have to read Prabhupada's books. We have to hear the philosophy. Prabhupada said, if you don't read the books, he said, even worshiping the deity will become a burden. If we don't understand Krishna, everything's about learning who Krishna is. How wonderful Krishna is. Again, Prabhupada told me that before I became his servant, reading him Krishna book. Prabhupada, imagine, I had been in the temple for one, literally one year. Just going, I went to Los Angeles to get Brahmin initiation. And in the, we're in the garden every afternoon, five or six young devotees, brahmacharis, so I'm reading Krishna book. And Prabhupada looked at me one day and he said, Krishna may be God, maybe he's not God. He said, we don't care, we just love Krishna. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with the Krishna book and think, I just found out that he is God. And now Prabhupada's saying, we don't care if he's God. We just love this very sweet boy, Krishna. So then Prabhupada laughed. He said that that's the gopis. He said, they don't know any philosophy. He said, they don't read any books. They just love Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the funny thing is, to get to that point, you read the book. Mm -hmm. but, but ultimately, we just want to love Krishna. We just want to serve Krishna. We just want to be with Krishna. We just want to give Krishna to everyone else. Okay. So we can do this again, if you like, in the future. We like. And is <laughs> um, uh, Udav, I think, has. Can we take one more question? Okay. And okay. Uh, I like your point. Um, the best point about everything you said was you might be able to come on next Sunday. Yes. Yeah. We had we had already agreed to that. I think. Wow. Oh, 
my goodness, Trikalagia, we owe you big time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, you owe, you owe Vrindavan Temple. <laughs> <laughs> I have to I have to get in good with my temple president here, Panchagoda. <laughs> so yeah, you have to you have to help us out here in Vrindavan. Prabhupada's yes. home. Yes. 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 Okay, yes. you had one more question. Yes, uh, Udav, did you have a question? Uh, no, Prabhuji. I was just going to mention there's something in the chat. Oh, okay. Sanjana. Um, this, um, I must introduce you to her. Sanjana is a, a graduate who's studying English literature and she's uh -huh. uh, um, joining us in the Gita seminars that we do. And a highly intelligent, and she, she's uh, summarized Bhagavad Gita for us a couple of times. And Very nice. even though she's just begun really understanding the philosophy, she's already understood it quite well. So Sanjana, uh, do you have another question, Sanjana? Uh, ah, uh, yeah, it might be internet issue. Okay. Anyway, her, her point was um, for a, a young devotee uh, beginning yeah. their journey, what is the most important thing for that devotee? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good association. <laughs> At the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, we, we always want to we want to have good association. Hello, hello. hello. Hi, Krishna. Um, sorry, I think I just dropped connection. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sanjana. Ah, Hare Krishna. Um, I just wanted to ask, what do you think is the most important? I'm quite young and I'm quite new to the movement. And what do you think is the most important thing we could do? Um, at this moment, if you're new? Um, well, I, I, think we're, I think we're all doing it. Uh, you know, this is, this is, we have to learn how to associate. Prabhupada's giving us an opportunity to see under any, any situation how as, as devotees, Prabhupada would always say association is the most important. We, we practice Krishna consciousness with others. It's not something we do alone. So, of course, everything, Prabhupada had a way of speaking. It was also very interesting. He would, just like he said, book distribution was most important. But then he also said deity worship was most important. So Prabhupada used that phrase, most important. It didn't mean everything else was less important. Everything in Krishna consciousness is most important. Prabhupada once said that um, Krishna consciousness is easy. He said determination is difficult. So that determination means no matter what's going on, we just keep applying ourselves and huh? doing our service, chanting our rounds. So, of course, <laughs> Prabhupada said, of course, most important thing, we get our rounds done, we follow the principles. And then somehow or other, we, we just want to be able to serve, serve Krishna. Um, Prabhu mentioned, you know, you're very qualified. And uh, I'm sure just in time, everything, everything will go nice. And you just want to hear from people who enthuse you. You know, enthusiasm, these are the principles. When I, when I joined in 1971, we, we heard many things um, over and over again. Of course, one was... You know, the basic principle is always remember Krishna, never forget him. So that's the first principle. Our whole lifetime, our idea is that we can remember Krishna at the time of death. So to do that, we just engage ourselves in Krishna consciousness. As I said, Prabhupada, he's, he made it seem, he showed us everything. His example, um, when I was with him, was just, was perfect. Um, Prabhupada was not a fanatic. He was, he didn't have OCD. He did everything. He was very regulated. He engaged with all of his disciples. He chanted his rounds. He set the perfect example. He honored Prashadam. So all of these things are important. 
to in in every possible way to engage in Krishna's service. So um, beginning time, I I find actually was the sweetest time for me when I joined 1971. The first few years were most exciting to come to Krishna consciousness, and and in many ways it was very very easy, and that easiness was Prabhupada was there, and the enthusiasm within the society was was as they would say about us we were bright faced huh? that was always the term they used in the newspapers when they would write about the hari krishnas they were bright faced so bright face comes because we did everything Prabhupada told us and we especially whatever we knew we gave it to others and that enthusiasm to give krishna to others that will give you the most enthusiasm so maybe above everything else it's sharing sharing what you have in krishna consciousness with others is is um one way one can always feel enthusiastic thank you so much that's hey. an amazing message amazing message <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> again being with Prabhupada, you would learn a lot just by being with him, you know, you would see. He showed us, he showed us practically how to be a devotee. We could listen okay. to you all day, all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I let me see. Um, seven, seven thirty. I get to swing the deities one more time without a shine of thunder in the yes. temple room. Of course. Thank you. Tomorrow Thank you. is Balaram's appearance day. Yes. So you remember that very beautiful description I read to you. That was you know, beautiful. Balaram. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for hey, giving your association. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kali Prabhu. Thank you for making this happen. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Hare Krishna. We're going to continue with a few things. I wanted to okay. just we call it yeah, it's there still. So I just wanted to uh, say a few things uh, to him. So, okay. Thank you. Hare, Thank you. Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Trikal Prabhu, thank you very much for organizing. That was phenomenal. He's an amazing uh, devotee and uh, so close to Prabhupada. And the message he gave was perfect about the reading, learning, and sharing. So, this really touches uh, what we actually want to do as well. So, thank you for that. And uh, regards, uh, uh, just to let devotees know, uh, we've sent uh, 108,000 rupees uh, from the collection that we've made. Uh, send Navi a message next year. Uh, even Sri Krishna has let him know in advance. That so uh, that uh, has gone to uh, Vindavan Temple. And also, Trikal Prabhu's uh, contact uh, donated. Um, 700 pounds and 67,000 rupees has also gone to Vrindavan Temple. So we've still got uh, another 130 pounds which has to go to Vrindavan Temple, but we're just going to wait, get a few more collections, and then we will try to send another 108,000 so, uh, rupees. So if devotees are able to contribute, that will certainly assist the uh, Vrindavan Temple um, especially Janmashmi time is coming. This is a very, very auspicious time. Balaram Jayanti tomorrow, uh, Janmashmi the following Wednesday, and then Radhasmi will be there. So these are very auspicious times to get the blessings of Prabhupada and Radha and Krishna. So please try to, whatever you are able to do, comfortably, please do. And we also, I think Trikal Prabhu, we will see something about the Goshala at some point. You can share something and we can show that maybe next Sunday so we can see what is happening in Vrindavan. We wish you to get better very quickly and we wanted to actually do the Nashinga coverage and the Nashinga uh, prayers 
for yourself uh, because you are in the most amazing place and um, Krishna and Radharani will always look after you there, no doubt about it. But we will also uh, make sure that uh, we do some prayers that uh, will, the Lord will also be taken into account and look after you very nicely. Um, so, shall we do that now? Shall we do the Nishinga coverage now? Is that okay? Is Karuna there? Yeah. Great. So, if the devotees are still uh, have got time, please stay and you can recite the Nishinga coverage uh, with us. Just so. Yeah. So, And I have to thank all the devotees for coming on board. And wasn't he amazing? Shruti Kirti, what a message as well. So very good. So Karuna Bandar, would you like to... Hey Krishna. Krishna. Shushita Shrina Shrina Devi Ki Jai, Pranad Maharaj Ki Jai, Shabu Bada Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai.